or more likely the result of overexcited imagination from sailors who encountered very rough seas. Now we know that these monster waves are actually much more common than we thought. So what do I mean when I say monster waves? By definition, we're talking about a wave that is two times bigger than the average big waves in a given area of sea. Now that sounds impossible. So some years back, the Europeans set out to find out if it was really happening or just a myth. They had this big project which they called Max Wave, the Max Wave Project, where they used satellites to study the oceans, and they were shocked to find 10 monster waves in just three weeks, wow. each more than 80 feet high. Like this one recorded off an oil platform in 1995. 10 of these in three weeks, and that forever laid to rest the idea that these were once in a lifetime events as some previously thought, Erin. I mean, that is just pretty incredible. When you say eight to nine stories, I mean, 80 feet tall, I think people well, there are waves that big to begin with. So, so Tom, here's the thing. Do they just happen? I mean, I'm trying to think about the bottom of the sea and the, you know, the topography down there. I mean, do they just, you have to be in the middle of a storm or near a storm, or could you just suddenly have, out of the blue, an 80-foot wave just come sweeping in? If you're near stormy conditions, obviously you can get bigger waves. But part of what makes some of these unusual is that they don't have to be in a storm to form. They can appear in relatively mild conditions. Three factors can come into play. First of all, you can have something called a soliton rolling through. This is a general, broad, permanent wave. It's more of a high swell in the water, which can push all the water up above it. What can make this happen? Well, if you have areas where currents are flowing together in mm. different ways, countermanding each other, if you have that happen, these sort of currents moving underneath here, basically slamming into each other in some fashion, they can force water up. Now, there's a second factor you can talk about here, too. For example, you could have high winds that are also playing a role. So if you have water coming in and you have winds that are sweeping in and pushing against that water, that can also drive the water up further. If you put all of that together, you can wind up with a wave that winds up much taller than anything about it. It can also hollow out a trough here, and then any boat mm. caught into it, it's really in for a very tough time, bone-breaking power crashing in on it.